So what we're going to be looking at today is using the information we learnt the other day about quadratics and we're going to apply that knowledge to what we call maximum minimum problems. So this is something that's going to be a little bit new but you shouldn't have any problems with it. Now the first thing I would like you to do is I'd like you to think about a rectangle that has a perimeter of 10 centimetres. And I'd like you to probably pause the video, you can watch the first part, then pause the video and see if you can come up for me with at least five examples of what a rectangle might look like that has a perimeter of 10 centimetres. So if I think about my rectangle, here's my first one, I'm just going to draw it up here. And if I think about this rectangle, I could think of it having um, a side of three. And if it has one side of three, then I guess the other side here would be three. And then the other side here would be two. And the other side here would be two. So three and three is six plus two and two is four. So six and four is 10. Now, if I think about the area of this rectangle, two times three is six. So the area of this rectangle would be, if it was in centimeters, six centimeters squared or six whatever units squared. So what I'd like you to do then is I'd like you to pause the video now and come up with some other rectangles. So here are some examples that I've come up with. Um, I've gone into my decimals. So you can see I've worked out the perimeter and all of these give me a perimeter of 10 centimetres. And in the middle I've put just the areas that that would give. Now, once I've got that information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this information and place it onto a graph. So if I go down further, here is my graph. And the graph I'm graphing is the length of the base of the rectangle and the area of the rectangle. And I've got a scale and I basically go from 0 to 5 because I really couldn't go anything larger. Well, I probably could have fitted the 6 on, but I'm not going to have room. So can you see my first one? I've got a length of 3 or I've got a length of 2. Now it doesn't matter which one is which, So, but if I've got a length of 2 or a length of 3, my area of my rectangle is 6 centimetres. So if my length is 2, so I'm going down here to 2, then the area of that rectangle is 6. And if I've got a length of 3, the area of that rectangle is also 6. I'm not sure why that keeps trying to make that disappear. And I'm just waiting for it because it was trying to make it disappear. Okay, and again. And then I can go back up and have a look at it again. And I can choose another rectangle. Here's a rectangle here where I've got a length of one and four, and the area is four centimeters. So if a length is one, I'm graphing this. Here is one, here is the four. And if the length is four, we have four here as well, and so on and so on. And so if I keep graphing all of these, I end up with, well, if the length is zero, then the area is zero. And equally, if I had this graph that went all the way up to six, then it would be zero as well. But I've also got this other strange one in the middle because my square that was 4.5 by 4.5 had an area of um, 6.25 so six there's six and a half here so 6.25 is here so what you can see is once we start graphing the area against the side length what we end up with is we end up with a shape and if I was to draw my line on this shape you could see that I end up with a parabola now yours is going to be so much nicer than mine but this is what we end up with so what you can see is I have a maximum area, maximum area of 6.25, and that occurs when I have a length of 2.5 centimetres. So up here, this vertex or this turning point is actually now my maximum area. Because that's where I have the highest value, and the maximum turning point, which happens to be an upside down parabola, is the maximum area. And that's what I wanted you to get out of this exercise. So therefore, when I move on to the next part, we can look at using some of these examples and being able to draw things. 
So here is an example where I've been given a formula. I haven't had to work it out. And it's a ball being thrown into it, the air. Its height h after 2 seconds can be given by this formula. Graph the function to calculate the maximum height the ball will reach. So what you have here is you have a ball and we're going to graph it. Now the only way that we know to graph, and we're graphing t against h, and the only way we know how to graph this is to draw up a table of values. So here is my table of values that I'm popping together now. We only know what happens at time 0 and then any time after that. So we only need to start our parabolas with our drawing starting from 0, 2, 3, let's say, and 4. And then if I substitute 0 in, I'm going to get 0. If I substitute 1 in, I get 15 and 20 and 15 and so on. So that's 1, 2, 3. Um, so if I have a look at this and I try and graph it, I'm going to have time along the bottom. So I've got time along the bottom and then I have my height h in metres and then I just graph it. So I've got my 0, 0 point is the first point I've got and then 1 goes up to 15, so 14, so 15 has happens to be here and then 2 goes up to 20 and of course because I'm drawing dots it's not going to like it and then 3 goes back down to 15 again and 4 goes to 0 and what we end up with when we graph it and yours is going to be so much nicer than mine is we end up with our parabola and the question says graph the function to find the maximum height well you possibly could have seen the maximum height which probably should turn a bit more here um, but the question did ask us to graph it. So what is the maximum height? You can see here the maximum height is 20. So the maximum height is 20. And that's all we have to do, 20 metres. So this leads on to the main part of the work, which is what kind of appears in the HSC. So a rectangular field is to be made out of, now can you please make a correction on here? This shouldn't say 10, it should say 100 metres of fencing. If the length of the field is x metres, show that the width of the field is 50 minus x metres. So what we have to do is we have to show that question. So imagine that here is my rectangular field. And we're going to show this algebraically. Um, the length of the field is x. So if this is my length, I'm going to call it x. And so the other side, the width, I'll probably call that y if you like. So if my length is x, so we can say that, length is x, so the width is y. So if I was to find the perimeter of this field, it must be x plus x plus y plus y, and the length of this fencing around this field has to equal to 100. x plus x is 2x, y plus y is 2y, equals 100. And what we want is we want this in terms of x because we want it to be 50 minus x. So I'm going to take this 2x here and take it to the other side. So I've got 2y equals 100 minus 2x. And because I want y by itself, I'm going to divide by 2. So if I divide this side by 2, I just get y. And if I divide the other side by 2, dividing it all by 2. Now, this dividing all of this side by 2 is the same as dividing the first part by 2 and the second part by 2. This is the same way of writing it. This and this are equivalent to each other. Now 100 divided by 2 is 50 and 2x divided by 2, well these x's cancel leaving me x. And now I have finished part A which is that show that. Part B, so let's tick that, part B says show the area is given by A equals 50x minus x squared. So for part B, if we're going to find the area, it's a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is length times breadth. And so if we're doing length times breadth, the length we know is x and the breadth we know is y, but y we know is 50 minus x. So let me pop that in. 
And now if we expand the brackets by multiplying, 50 times x is 50x, minus x times x, which is x squared. And that's exactly what we were supposed to show, so we've done that as well. Part B says find the maximum area of the field. Now, in finding the maximum area of the field, to do that, what we have to do is we actually have to um, draw up a table of values and we have to graph. That's the only way we are able to show. So, what we have is we have X and A, and this is the formula we're going to be using. And I'm going to give you a table of values. In an exam, more than likely they're going to give you a table of values. They're not going to leave you floundering like I have. Um, I'm going to give us our numbers up to 35. So you might want to pause the video here and have a go at completing this yourselves. Let's just use all of this up. And so you can see I've now completed my table of values. And you can actually read off the table of values where the maximum area actually is. Or if we were to draw that, it's, my graph is going to look something along these lines. Um, where you can see when it's 25, when the length is 25, the maximum area is 625. So the question is what is the maximum area? The maximum area is 625 meters squared. And that's all there is to do. Now, it looks pretty scary to start with. Please rewind the video and have another look at it if you weren't sure about anything. And of course, I'm going to be giving you some more like this in class.